Hi guys, what is happening in Iceland? So they have increase the risk level again so they have released a new hazard map and as far as i know that is very early that they increased the risk level to red in light of a potential new eruption because usually in my opinion it wasn't that early in the past let me know if i'm wrong but i found it very very interesting because if you look at that let's start with that new hazard map and then i'll tell you what is going on with the magma chamber that is underneath the swartzangi area and what their predictions are this time for this eruption. So look at that hazard map. So basically what they have done, they have increased the risk levels for every zone instead, um, just not zone seven yet. So at the old map, if you look at this, like basically Grindavik and where the Sutnuka Crater series is zone three and zone six have been orange. And then we have the interesting zone is zone one, that is Swartzangi where the power plant is located and the Blue Lagoon. And this is the area that they were most worried about in the final days of the last eruption because it kept sending these massive lava flows towards the defense wall there in Swartzangi and these lava flows did breach the defense wall there and were threatening to destroy the power plant. They were overflowing, so they were really like fighting it with water and with bulldozers and they said, well, we were very happy that the eruption ended and did not continue to send more lava that way because it would have been difficult to really fight that lava they have ordered more equipment to cool down lava they didn't have it at that time it should have arrived by now so maybe they're a little bit better equipped but they have said that it could be difficult to defend that area in the next eruption. And it's also difficult to predict future lava flows because the previous eruptions, and especially the last one, has changed the landscape with different heights now because these lava carpets have built up. So the old flow models are not valid anymore because the topography of these areas has changed. So that's why it's also a little bit of an uncertainty what the next eruption will do. But they have also said, and that's interesting, and that's why I think Grindavik is in the red now as well in the new hazard map, is they said what they can say from the previous eruptions, the volcano is wandering south. It's getting south towards Grindavik. The eruptions are happening more and more south, unfortunately, not north, south towards Grindavik. And I mean, it has already been super, super south in the January eruption when the second fissure opened and burned down three homes and the lava was flowing into Grindavik. Luckily, that eruption was so short that not more lava could flow into Grindavik, but they would not have been able to prevent it. But now they're saying it also could erupt inside of Grindavik. And that would be devastating for the town because there's nothing you can do if a fissure opens inside Grindavik and the lava comes out. That, that would be the absolute worst case scenario in that area. Probably, even worse would be if the power plant would be out of order because a lava flow would destroy it, right? Then there's the Blue Lagoon that's attached to the power plant. That's a tourist attraction that brings them a lot of money. But the power plant supplies a large part of the southern or of the Reykjanes Peninsula with hot water, heat in the winter, and with power. It's a geothermal power plant. So they're worried what they can do and the problem is i mean they have been working on increasing the heights of the defense walls but you can only do this that much you're reaching your limits and the problem is that through all these eruptions the lava has built up on top of each other increasing the height so much that it's been higher than the defense walls and been creeping over the defense walls the lava carpets are as high as 20 meters 30 meters in some spots so you can't build the defense walls that's that high right so we're all waiting for what's going to happen and I'm sure they're all very, very nervous. So the new hazard map, it we have these red areas 
zone three that's where they expect probably that's the sutnuka crater series that's the area where most of these eruptions have happened and basically it's also since november last year november 10th when we had that huge magma intrusion that came with these large earthquakes that did so much damage to the town of Grindavik. there was a 15 kilometer long magma dike that was formed it was a magma intrusion that means magma didn't reach the surface but it's 15 kilometer long and since then all the eruptions that have followed basically were happening along that magma dike and that magma dike is going right underneath Grindavik into the sea so we could see an eruption probably in that area and where the dike is in Grindavik it has also formed like these sickle valleys like land subsidences so we will have to wait and see so what they're saying in light of the fact that they're could be a new magma intrusion or even an eruption that could be expected in the coming weeks, maybe in two weeks, maybe in three weeks. That's what they're saying. That's why the danger level has been raised in all regions, except in region seven. That's where that golf course is and stuff. So they don't think that an eruption is very likely in that area. And until a potential lava flow would reach that area, it's not very likely. So right now they're saying this new hazard map is valid on Ju until July 30th, unless we see an eruption or something changes until then. But what is happening with the magma chamber that is underneath Schwarzenegge? So it is filling up again and it's steadily filling up. You know, a lot of scientists said, well, with the last eruption, if that ends, that's it for that area. There won't be a new eruption. I know it looks like they've been wrong. So seismic activity in this area for the last few days has been very low. So it doesn't look like that something's grinding to the surface or that something's happening there. Um, they did detect 10 earthquakes near that magma tunnel in the Sutnuka crater series in the past 24 hours and 90 in the past week, but not a cluster of an earthquake swarm that would indicate that something's really on the move. Um, so they're saying most of them are under one in size and they are in similar locations they're saying most of them are under one in size and they are in similar locations like the previous events in the previous eruption areas. So then they give us a comparison like more than 50 earthquakes were recorded daily in the run up to the last eruption. So probably we need to see a bigger increase in earthquakes before we can see the next eruption. But it could also catch us by surprise and within a few hours start a massive earthquake swarm then followed by an eruption or intrusion. So it does not necessarily give us that much indication or warning time. But what we can say is already that the seismic activity is slowly increasing day by day if we look at the last few weeks so it is steadily increasing and that is compatible it is in line with what we're seeing underneath Sangi with the magma accumulation in that shallow magma chamber there because if this is filling up it's putting pressure on the on the layer of rocks that's above it that keeps the lid on and that leads to seismic events if something's stretching underneath the rocks are being stretched and lifted up it's a land rise so speaking of the land rise guys the land rise is continuing and the magma accumulation underneath Swartzangi and the Blue Lagoon has been quite stable they have released a new graph that shows this so over the last few weeks, it's been steadily going up. If you look here, you see July on the right side and you see that red curve. So after the last eruption ended, the land was subsiding and they, they thought, oh, if, is the magma chamber empty, right? The magma is out, the land is subsiding, but then it slowly turned the curve around and then kept steadily 
increasing like all the events before you see on that map you see when the events started in november with that blue line and it basically shows you how long it was filling up until something happened right then the amount of magma that they could measure in the magma chamber was dropping and then it started again then we had an intrusion or eruption dropping and it started again and this red line is a little bit different than the other lines right but only only right after the last eruption ended with that u curve but now it's steady basically parallel to the curve that we have seen that golden line here that did start in march between march and may um that was the curve that we saw before the last eruption started so basically we're almost there at the same amount of fill in that magma chamber but they're saying you know like a rubber band if i stretch it very often it wears out and it didn't lengthen so probably we have a little bit more space in that magma chamber and we need a little bit more magma to have the same pressure that we had when the last eruption started. So probably the red curve will go higher than the last curve, than the golden curve, and then we will see another intrusion. So in numbers, where are we? So they say it is estimated that right now, between 13 and 19 million cubic meters of magma must now be added underneath Sangi from the time the last eruption ended to build up enough pressure to trigger a new magma flow and even an eruption. So 30 million, that is really low. Um, 19 million cubic meters, we were at a roughly like I think 20 million cubic meters or something like this over that when the last eruption started. So my personal opinion is I think we'll be over 20 million cubic meters um, before we see the next eruption. So what they're saying is according to their model calculations that can never be accurate, completely accurate, they think it's most likely that the amount that has added right now has been added in that magma chamber since the last eruption is probably around 16 million cubic meters or will reach that amount in the coming days. Um, they are stressing that there's some uncertainty about these calculations, but what they're saying, what they're sure of, we can expect a new magma flow and even an eruption in the next two to three weeks. So that is interesting. And they have shown another graph here that shows it a little bit better how much magma was in the magma chamber when an eruption happened. You see the curves, they're ending either with a star or the blue, light blue one with a square, the purple one with a square. The squares show that there was an intrusion. So magma did not reach the surface and the star means it was an eruption. And then the curve that we're seeing now, the red one, has a circle because this is still in the works, so to speak. So you see the golden curve, like I just said, we've been probably a little bit over 20 million cubic meters. And then the red curve says, well, we're not really there yet. We're probably there where the green curve is. So what has happened in December, I think green is December. Um, so I think it's probably going to fill up a little bit more, but who knows? You never know with that system, right? The volcano can surprise us. So we can't su be super, super sure that this is really the case but i have to say with the past eruptions these calculations and the predictions were quite accurately so um it took most of the time longer than they said but really a surprise was only the small intrusion that we've seen in march and you you also see this here um on the other graph there in March, you see the light blue line and then an orange line. So there was a small intrusion and then it right away started raising back up again. There wasn't much lava flowing out. That's why the next line starts basically where the light blue line ended. That was a surprise and nobody was sure what that meant. But other than that, we're waiting. But they have given us 
potential eruption scenarios, the Icelandic Meteorological Office, they have given us predictions what could happen or what they consider the most likely scenario in the event of an eruption. So they have given us two scenarios that are considered equally likely and they are based on the initial power of the May eruption that was basically going through all of May. So scenario one, we will see an eruption between Stora, Skokfell and Sudnuk. That is basically in the middle of zone three if you look at the hazard map here. So that's a similar location to the eruption that began on December 18th last year, 2023, that also same location of the February 8th eruption, the March 16th and the May 29th event. So they're saying the likely cause is a local series of small earthquakes between Stora Skokfell and Silingerfell, then an acceleration and deformation in land rise because the magma is filling and pressure changes in the boreholes in the area that they have around the the Swartzengi power plant. So they would then probably know it's coming, but they're saying again, it would be very short notice, less than 30 minutes to get out of the area. So last, we've had eruptions where there was even less notice than that. They're also saying lava could reach Kindaviko Vigo at, at the where Mount Thorbjörn is um, in less than 1.5 hours. And also the road Grinda Vigo at Swartzengi outside the defense walls in less than three hours. And we know from the past eruptions, Grinda Vigo, that's this main road that basically goes north south. You, if you come from Keflavik or Reykjavik and you want to access the power plant or the Blue Lagoon or Grindavik, this is the fastest, largest road to reach that. And it has always been. Um, or damaged by the lava flowing over it at Swartzengi, but also at the doorstep of Grindavik. Um, so that is a likely scenario that doesn't surprise me. And that's also the problem once the lava crosses Grindavik Ovego at Swartzengi, it reaches then the defense walls. And depending on how big the lava flow is, that could be a problem. So scenario two, that would be an eruption with a fissure that would open south of the Sutnuka crater series at Hagafell, or worst case, even south of Hagafell. So very close to Grindavik, inside Grindavik, but definitely very, very bad for Grindavik because of the lava flows, because the land slopes down gradually towards the sea from there and that's causing the problem because then it's flowing towards Grindavik. So that's the southern part of zone three on this hazard assessment map and the upper part of zone four of Grindavik. So it's already going into zone four and that's not good. So that would be a similar location to the eruption that we've seen in January, January 14th this year. And that was very critical. Thankfully, this eruption didn't last long, a day and a half, I think. So lava couldn't really damage Grindavik too much, but it was happening inside that defense wall that was around Grindavik. And as we've seen, the last two eruptions did la last several weeks. So should the next eruption last several weeks again and happen inside Grindavik or inside these defense walls, Big problem, big problem. That's probably even underestimated to say big problem, devastating problem, right? So what are they saying would be an indication that this could happen? Also, again, a series of small earthquakes that would start near Stora Skokfell or Selingerfell, and then these earthquakes would move south. So you would see it on the live earthquake map that they're moving south towards Grindavik. So that would mean magma is moving south. And then of course, again, an acceleration and deformation and pressure changes in the boreholes in the area. That would remain the same. So they're also saying that it's likely that the eruption warning in this area would be longer 
than in scenario one because of course the magma needs to travel a longer distance so you have a little bit more warning time but how much they're saying that's uncertain it can be 10 minutes only right you don't know um they're saying the longer notice is determined by how far south the magma makes its way before it reaches the surface yeah the distance the longer the distance the longer hopefully the warning time but the good thing is since they have raised the alert level that people are aware right so lava could reach the roads again there which is a problem if you want to exit Grindavik or access Grindavik so that could be Nesvegur if you look at the map on the western side and Surostrandavegur and that could happen in less than one and a half hours so worst case scenario Grindavikovegur could be affected and the other two roads that go out of Grindavik and you could be locked in there if you're not exiting fast enough. And there's always the problem, you don't know how strong these earthquakes will be. Will there be more cracks or sinkholes and fissures that will open in Grindavik or on these roads? Will the roads be usable for people to get out? So I hope they're having boats in the harbor just for the worst case scenario, because we know on November 10th, it looked really bad with the roads, right? So, and hopefully it won't happen at night again, but usually these eruptions tend to happen when it's dark. Um, there was one, I think was it the last one or the one before that started during daylight, but usually they do this at night and that's not good if you don't have enough visibility with your cars or if you're running. So this is not, in my opinion, yeah, one and a half hours warning time. But if the earthquakes already happened, then there might be hazardous things on the roads. Let's say Nesvegu, Suda Standa Vegu, less than one and a half hours time to get out there. But they're also saying what I just said, a lava flow could possibly block ex escape routes on land out of Grindavik in about six hours. So then Grindavik could be completely blocked off from any access and exit. exit, of course. Good thing is there's still the water. So should this scenario happen, we have another problem. The lava could reach the sea east of Grindavik in about 1.5 to three hours. And if lava mixes with water, it's explosive. Chlorine gas can, can be spewed into the air. So let's say if lava reached the sea, it could cause a local hazard, right? Due to that rapid cooling of the lava, but we hope that everyone's out of the area. I mean, we know that there are these farms and these guys did stay last time I reported about this because they didn't want to leave their animals alone, right? So it would be probably a problem for these settlements that are there that are not directly downtown Grindavik, so to speak, but east of Grindavik. So that is what stresses me out because, you know, I have a farm, I have animals and I don't want to leave my animals alone and leave them to their fate so um, i would stay with them as well if i can't evacuate them fast enough and if you have a lot of sheep and animals right it's a problem at first there would be danger from pyroclasticity and gas formation primarily hydrochloric acid and then in a radius about 500 meters from the point where lava would come into contact with the sea conditions would be life-threatening and then you see here the map if you do a radius of 500 meters that is concerning i don't like that scenario but we have to be realistic it is a possible scenario because in not the previous i think the eruption before it was getting very close to pseudo stranda vigo only a few hundred meters were left until the lava would have reached the sea and then thankfully this eruption had ended and lava flow was diverted so but if the eruption is closer it doesn't need to travel that long to to get there so that's a real concern life-threatening conditions for animals and for humans and they're also saying 
there is a magma corridor that would be extending south of Hagafell, it would probably cause significant fissure movements in Grindavik again, opening these long fissures and cracks. They have invented their own hazard level for that. It's called crack collapse. So Grindavik would see probably more significant damage. And that's what I just said. If the warning time is short and if you're not out yet and these fissures start opening again as bad as they did in November and then it's nighttime, it's a hazard. If you want to get out by car, you could fall into this. So hopefully, at least if that happens, everyone is out already, that there's enough warning time or that it's daytime, that people can see what's happening. But the pavement hides cracks for a while you could have a hole already underneath the pavement but the pavement's not giving way yet but then you drive over with your car and you might fall into that so let's hope and pray that this is a scenario that will not happen but you know the threat is definitely definitely there if there is a scenario that Grindavik is damaged by new fissure movements and by an eruption close by or inside Grindavik. The possibility that lava can arise within Grindavik, that's what they're saying, must be assumed. So one possibility is that lava is emerging from a vent to the north of the defense walls at Grindavik and can then overflow. And then even the fissures might go underneath that defense walls and then the lava could re-emerge through open fissures within the town limits similar to what it did in January. So the possibility of a fissure opening within Grindavik, that's what they're saying, cannot be ruled out and they're saying in that case it is considered most likely that a fissure would first open north of the town basically like it did in January, before a fissure opens within the town limits. So the, the more southern fissure in January that burned down the houses happened after the longer fissure. So they're saying, of course, this is just an assumption. They're saying the scenarios that we have published are based on the latest data and analysis that they have done. And, um, these analysis give us reason to be concerned that lava may reach the defense walls at Grindavik. That's what the director of services and research at the Icelandic Metrological Office is saying. And he further says, we therefore need to be prepared for the possibility that lava that emerges from a eruption north of the defense walls above the town can find its way into the fissure system south of Hagafell and lead a lava stream into the town's borders. It looks like a Swiss cheese underneath Glendavik. There are already many underground fissures and tunnels. Remember that guy that the worker that was trying to fill a fissure with gravel and then tried to compact it and then it opened further and he fell in, they never found him. So there, he must have been, there was water there, there was a lake at the bottom, was very deep. So he must have been washed away by underground tunnels and imagine the fissure, let it be north of Brindavik, reaches that underground tunnel system, then it can all fill up with lava and then it can pop out pop up at places inside of Grindavik. This is not a good scenario. I know many of you say, well, it would also fill up the fissures underneath Grindavik and stabilize it anymore. Well, I don't know, right? We will have to see. Last thing they're saying is the lava flow models that they have preliminary done, they show that in the event of an eruption at Hagafell, the lava flow could block the escape routes on land out of town within hours of the eruption. So they have to be very, very careful. And I think that's why they have raised the alert level earlier than in previous scenarios. And I think that's they're doing a great job right now. And I, I hope that the people listen to what they're saying and leave in time and probably also the farmers um, they have right now enough time to evacuate their animals and if, it, if I was a farmer there I would leave 
I would leave because the chances that lava comes their way are high. And then the gas pollution, right? The toxic gas pollution. That's your animals could all be dead, even if you make it out in time. So that was my update. There's more coming guys there's more background stories that i want to tell you but i don't want to make this video too long so update from iceland guys thank you so much for watching thanks for your support check out the videos in the end screen there's new information coming very very soon thank you guys bye bye